Hello and welcome to Code Slicing. We're going to be building what is quite possibly the largest, stickiest and stretchiest toggle in SwiftUI history. And if it's not one of those things, it is certainly the most impractical. Having said that, it is a fun way for me to communicate certain aspects about shapes, state management, gestures and animations. Now we've got a lot to cover, so in this episode we're going to be focusing on how we can morph our shape in such a way that it looks like it's being stretched. And in the next episode, we'll cover the other things that I mentioned. Now, like I said, we've got a lot to do, so it's about time I stopped talking and got on with it. Right, not much to explain before we start. And as I said, we're only going to be doing the stretchable shape in this one. And when we're designing a shape, the first thing we do is define that shape so we can start using it immediately. So let's do that now. Private shape, stretchable square, we'll call it. And then we'll use it up here. Bye bye sticky toggle, hello stretchable square. And we'll give it a frame of 360. So it fills our screen nicely. And before resuming, let's define our layout config for this. Up here, private let toggle layout config is a layout guide config of type grid with 10 columns and 10 rows. Now we can resume and lay that config over our shape. Layout guide, toggle, layout config. And we'll show layout guides depending on whether or not we're debugging. Debug equals true. Because what we're going to do, as we did with the settings icon episode, and if any of this is confusing you, I recommend watching that because we covered it in some detail, but we're going to make sure that we can come back to debugging this shape whenever we like. So with that in mind, let's start making it. And if you've watched any of these, you'll know that the first thing we do is to lay out our guide in the rectangle. And we do that like this. Let G is the toggle layout config laid out in the rectangle. And what we're going to do in this shape to create the stretched look, I'm going to have four points. We're going to have P1, P2, P3, and P4. There's going to be a straight line between one and two and three and four, but there is going to be a quad curve between one and four and two and three, which we're going to be able to control the shape of. So let's define our four points. P1 is the top leading point. P2 is the top trailing point. P3 is the bottom trailing. And P4 is the bottom leading point. Now we need some control points between those two and I'm going to define them now like this. So the point that goes from two to three, let CP two P three is equal to, we're going to make it 10 comma one for now. We're also going to need one down here that CP two P one, which is equal to zero comma one. You'll see why in just a minute. And then we need to define our actual shape now that those are in place. And I've declared these points here rather than as inline expressions, because we're going to want to manipulate where those points are, depending on how stretched our shape is. So putting them here means we have much clearer access to that and we know what we're doing. First thing we do is move to point one. Path, move, P1, right? Nice and easy. Now we're going to add a line to P2. Path line P2. Now we're at the top right and you would expect to see a line, but we're not seeing anything. The reason is that we haven't put any styling on this shape and we're going to style it depending on whether or not we are debugging. So this is going to be another extension on shape, just like we did in the settings icon. So let's put it down here. Private extension on shape. And we're going to need a view builder for this one. 
We'll call it toggle style because why not? Which is going to take a color and whether or not we are debugging. That's going to return some view. So if we are debugging, and this is why we need a view builder annotation here, because we're going to be resolving to different types depending on whether or not we're debugging. So if we are debugging, we're going to stroke it, but we're going to use black, regardless of the color that's passed in, uh, with a style that, again, looks nice. With a line width of two, a line cap of round, and a line join of round. We'll get rid of the rest. And if we're not debugging, we're just going to fill it with the color. Simple as that. So let's resume, and then I'm going to add this styling up here. Toggle style. We'll give it a color of green. And debug is going to be debug. Now we should see our line. There it is. Let's go back to drawing our shape. Uh, now we need a quad curve to point three. Quad curves are a little simpler than normal Bezier curves because they only have one control point, which we've already defined. So everything is ready for us to go. So let's do it here. Path, quad curve. The point we're going to is P3. And the control point is CP to P3. And we're going to show control points depending on whether or not we're debugging. But we don't have that parameter yet. So let's add it here. Bar, debug, which is a Boolean. And then up here we can say debug is debug. We resume and we should see our control point. And there it is. So now we go back down to our shape. And we need a line to P4. Path, line, P4. And then another quad curve back to P1. P1, CP to P1. Show control points is debug. OK. So now we've got our two control points on there. And you can see if I change these, that controls the shape of those side curves. We want to move those control points in. But at the same time, we want to move P3 and P4. So we want P4 to come in and P3 to come in. And we want the same thing to happen to these control points. So it's going to look like it's sticking and stretching. We're going to use the to extension on points that you will have come across if you've seen the episode of animating points from the layout guide series, which I do recommend watching if you haven't, uh, because it will explain a lot of what we're doing now. But essentially, the to extension allows you to interpolate from one point to another based on a factor. And if the factor is zero, it will be P1. And if the factor is one, it will be P2. And it interpolates linearly between them. All we need to do is set up a factor which is going to control that and then tell it which points we want to interpolate between. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up an animatable data variable of type CG float, and I'm going to set it to one as though we are in the interpolated position. And then we can move through each point and determine where it needs to go for the best effect. So let's put this variable up here. Bar animatable data, which is a CG float. We'll make that equal to one. And let's do the moving of the points first. Now we want to move the bottom trailing point P3 to the coordinate six comma 10. And we want to move P4, which is the bottom leading point into four comma 10. So there's going to be a width of two between them when we're finished. So let's do that. Uh, P3, 2, G, 6, 10, with a factor of animatable data, like that. And as you can see, because animatable data is 1, it's moved into that final position. So now we need to do the same thing for P4. We say 2, G, 4, 10 animatable data like that. So now that's moved into its final position. The control point to point three, we want to move that into six comma one. And we want to move the control point to P1 into four comma one. Simple as that. So two G six comma one 
animatable data. And then we can just take what we've got here, put it there and change that to four. Unlike the control points in a Bezier curve, the control point in a quad curve isn't tied to either the point at the beginning or the end of the curve. It actually controls the curve going into both of them. So it could be represented as a dot. Now, when developing Pure Swift UI, I decided it would be best to add a line to the control point from the first point in the curve for two reasons. Firstly, to show which curve the control point belongs to, and secondly, to indicate the direction of the path. So if you were wondering why it looked like that, now you know. Right, so we're almost done for this episode. There are just a couple more things we need to finish off. The first thing is that we need to make it conform to the animatable protocol, so the stretching can be controlled by the SwiftUI animation engine. And because of the way we've declared that variable on line 35, that is very simple indeed. All I have to do is move it up like this. I just move it up until it's there. All I have to do then is remove that. Now we are conforming to animatable, believe it or not. Now, it's not very well named. What does animatable data mean? That's more of an internal implementation. But from an outside observer, we want this to be called the stretch factor because that's essentially what it is. So let's make a bespoke initializer. Stretch factor, which is a CG float and debug. Animatable data is equal to the stretch factor and debug is equal to debug. And now if we resume, we should be able to go up here and pass in a stretch factor of say one. And then when we resume, that's in the stretched position. So now if I set this to zero, it's back at the square. And as I interpolate between zero and one, we see it going more and more towards the fully stretched position. There are two things you might be wondering. Uh, the first is you might be wondering why it's still a square. It's not stretched. And that's because we're going to deal with the actual scaling of it as it stretches by scaling the shape, not by scaling the path. So we'll deal with that in part two. And the second thing is if I'm pulling from the top, this is fine. But what about when I'm pulling it from the bottom? Don't we have to change this shape completely so all the points and associated control points work in the other direction? And the answer is no, because we're using layout guides. And one of the advantages of using layout guides is that we can transform them. So all we need to do is rotate it 180 degrees and we're good to go. So let's pass another argument into this shape is top. We'll do that here is top set it to true we'll take it in in our initializer here is top which is a boolean and let me just store it here as a boolean now let's resume and then all we have to do is say that this layout guide is rotated 180 degrees with a factor of, are we the top? Yes, zero, no, one. So then if we're not the top, it will rotate it 180 degrees. Otherwise it will just leave it where it is. So if I change that to false, it should flip on its head. Just like that. Now, there is actually another way of doing that. We could have accomplished exactly the same thing by doing this. If I duplicate that and comment the first one out, I can change that to scaled and minus one. And then we'll get exactly the same thing. And the reason this is the same as a rotation is that since we are passing only one value, it means that we are scaling in both dimensions by minus one. So it will be completely inverted through the center of the frame, not just a reflection in the Y coordinate. And since we could do either one, I'm just going to stick with this one. One thing to notice here is that the is top property is not part of the animatable implementation. This means that it will be invisible to SwiftUI's animation framework and will not be animated. 
This is great because when it changes from the top to bottom orientations, it will be instant and not noticeable to the user. And for those of you yelling at the screen that there's an even simpler way of doing that by just rotating the shape, then yes, you're right. We could do that, but where's the fun in it? So all that's left to do, we can just change debug to false. And now we've got our stretched uh, shape there or not stretched. And the very last thing we're going to do is put a shadow on it, but we only want that shadow to be there if we're not debugging. So we're going to be using a lovely conditional modifier called shadow if not. If we're not debugging, we'll give it a radius of 10. All right, just like that. And that's a great place to stop for now. And in the next episode, we're going to be covering the gestures, the state of the toggle and the animations. So join me for that. It's going to be brilliant. If you like this, then remember to give it a thumbs up because it helps people find the channel and keeps me very happy indeed. And if you haven't subscribed already and you don't want to miss the fantastic conclusion to this, then consider doing that and it's very unlikely that you will. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time.